Let's talk about the particle quantifier index, which is just another way of measuring the ferrous content in oil. So we had WPC and WSI, which is the wear particle concentration and wear severity index, and now we have the particle quantifier index. Now, before we start talking about how that's measured, we need to understand a couple of concepts from physics. So if we pass a current through a wire, it's going to develop a magnetic field around it according to the right-hand rule. Now, these are magnetic field lines. And if we bend this wire into a coil, then what's going to happen is that those magnetic field lines are kind of additive, and they're going to form uh, what is effectively a bar magnet with a north and a south pole. Um, now, the strength of this magnetic field is dependent on a couple of things. It's dependent on the current, it's dependent on the number of windings, it's also dependent on the core. So here what I'm showing is a coil with an air core. So the magnetic field lines pass from north to south, right, and then they go through back through the air core from south to north. However, we can change the core and this will change the magnetic field strength. So if we put an iron bar through the middle, what that will do is increase the magnetic field strength. So this is a concept that we can, we can use. If we have a metal that causes magnetic fields to respond to its presence, then this is help, a helpful concept in measuring the quantity of iron that there is. So we use these concepts in measuring the PQI. So generally what we have is we'll take a sample and we'll put it into the machine. What's going on inside the machine? Well, there are coils, right? So we have a measurement surface, some balance coils, and an excitation coil. And the idea here is that if we have metal particles on the measurement surface, then the magnetic field of the coils is going to then be deflected in some way. And the degree of deflection is going to give us an indication of the volume of metal particles. And when I say metal, I specifically mean iron, nickel, or cobalt. So let's say in this example, right, we have three large particles and the PQ measures X. First thing to note that X doesn't have any units to it. So it's not in parts per million or anything like that. It's just this dimensionless number. So we can compare PQs, but it's not really an absolute measurement. Now, if we double the number of particles, then PQ is going to double in kind. If we shrink those down to half their size, now I have six particles, but the same volume as the three large particles, so our PQ goes back down to X. If I triple the number of small particles, it becomes 3X. And if I add in the original large particles, now we have a PQ of 4X. So one thing that's important to recognize there is that, first of all, PQ is a dimensionless number, but also it can't tell what size the particles are. It can only tell the overall volume. Where this gets quite powerful is when we use it in conjunction with other tests. So for example, when you get ICP results for iron, they can only see small particles. I, I use the term C very loosely. But basically, stuff that's like sort of eight microns and lower is where ICP comes into its own. For anything large, which is associated with something like fatigue wear, that won't show up on your ICP readings. So then we have to look to the PQ index to find those larger particles measured somewhere. So that's where PQ becomes quite powerful. All right, so the PQ index, the things to know is that it's a dimensionless number, it doesn't recognize particle size, and it's a test specifically for ferrous metals, so iron, nickel, and cobalt. Now, fortunately, we don't see much nickel and cobalt in either our formulations or in our equipment. Right? So generally, what we say is that the PQ is just a proxy for the ferrous content, that is the iron content of an oil sample.